Blog Talk Radio. And it just, it never, like then, seeing this video yesterday, 
just like when I saw so many films about hunter-gatherers back in the day when I was going to school still, it just never ceases to strike you how different they are from the stupid modern people who we've just lost our humanity incredibly so we can live in these conditions. I mean, you try to put hunter-gatherers into, in, you know, reservations, which is just another sort of FEMA camp type situation, and they just, they pretty much just want to die, you know, and yet we call this freedom, you know. I mean, uh, what do you think? you have any comment about that? Yeah, well, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, you're pretty much, a lot of people are, in the, you know, the term wage slave. You're just going to be a slave to the big corporation. They pay for your health care, so they take care of your health. You depend on your paycheck every uh, week or two weeks uh, to live off of that, and then you're basically... Um, you know, you you got to do what they say, and then they choose whether uh, if you if if they want you to survive or not by just by you know either keeping you employed or uh, or you, you know they can fire you. So it's uh yeah the concentration camp world is um, may sound like an exaggeration to some people, but when, when you really look at your life and um, the way things are going, it's not it's actually not too far fetched at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole idea of you know, the way hunter-gatherers live is, you know, foreign to us. It's strange to us. And uh, yet they're the ones who have all the free time. They're the ones who have all the good medicine that's free. They drink water that's free. I mean, we actually pay for water here in civilized Illuminati America. It, it's um, very, very surprising that we can't put all this together. And we think yet yeah, we're the smart ones. But if you really look around and see what is, you know, the product of all our intelligence. I can't really look at anything big. I mean, academia is not making big discoveries. There's some discoveries going on in conspiracy science, you know, with various conspiracy culture sh radio shows and researchers and stuff. But that doesn't get much press, and they're, they're not they're usually not that big, really. So it's, you know, I mean, really, what is the point of discovery? Maybe we're, what we're supposed to do is live at peace. And, you know, all this idea of progress, 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 let's move forward, 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 let's, you know, trying to become something different than what we are. Maybe that was just all a mistake. Maybe that's the biggest trick of the whole Illuminati system is that, you know, you go to school to change who you are. You go to the psychologist to change who you are. You know, we don't have, we have such a little idea of just accepting who we are. What about the idea that maybe we're perfect? You know, in God's image, just like we are. And the only way you can realize that is through meditation and prayer. And maybe the biggest trick of the Illuminati system is just to get us to totally not even notice this in any way. So we're, our whole lives we're just nervous and frantic and running around and trying to get this and that and, and do these different things and never just sit still and say, wait a minute, our true nature is just to not do much at all. I mean, that's what, you know, Buddha and Jesus modeled this for us perfectly. You know, in the times of greatest crisis, did they run around and, you know, get all panicky? No, they just sat still. I mean, Jesus was about to be killed, and he goes and prays for, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane for, you know, hours and hours. Buddha's about ready to, you know, meet Amara, the Prince of Darkness, and he just sits under a tree. And maybe this is, we're missing the whole picture here, that that's what we're meant to be doing. And, you know, if we would, we could find happiness that way, because we sure aren't finding happiness, you know, running around and scrambling and listening to the TVs and the politicians and football and everything else, don't you think? Yeah, and as far as being controlled by fear, which I think you're kind of getting as panicking, uh, the FEMA camps in themselves, you know, we are discussing this theory on Skype that they could simply just, you know, be feeding these rumors that we're all going to be round up into concentration camps just for more fear because they control people with fear. Um, I mean, this is just one of the many theories we have about the camps, but, you know, they could simply just be put there and these rumors spread just uh, simply for intimidation and, you know, I mean, the thought of getting rounded up, I mean, that is completely, you know, hellish and scary. I mean, what, what, mm -hmm. could it get any worse? It can't really get much worse than that if, that ever, if it ever comes down to that. Let's hope it doesn't come down to that. Yeah, in a way, though, we're rounded up already. You know, we're, I mean, we don't, I mean, the average person has to spend their entire life, uh, I mean, you can go home to your uh, a home that you think you chose, but it's just the one that the bank permitted you to buy, if you even have that. Or it just is, you know, it's determined by your income and so forth, uh, which is, you know, hopefully you're lucky enough to be one of those that makes 100000 or something. But most people, of course, aren't, and then they're all, you know, the average person is just, you know, so jealous of the person who has all that money. But we spend our lives, uh, you know, thinking, oh, I, I mean, the average person goes to work and... This isn't true for everybody. For the average person, though, I would say it's definitely the case. They long to, you know, oh, I can't wait to, to get out of work. can't wait to go home. So, well, that's 
the equivalent of living the majority of your life not doing what you want to do. That sounds like it's the person who's rounded up. They're living their life not doing what they want to do as well. And some people say, oh, Jeff, you little boy, how can you be so immature? Of course we can't do what we want. Well, there's whole cultures of people all over the world that live in extreme peace called hunter-gatherers, American Indians and so forth, and they, don't have, they do what they want to do every single day. And it's a spiritual life, and we just have no clue you know, about even how to live that way. We're, we're just basically, I don't know, gone. Maybe the concentration camp, from that perspective, maybe is like the ultimate tool of despiritualization, I'd say. You know, it, it's just a way to, to make sure that we can't ever sit still. You know, we've always got to be bustling around. We're just like, yeah, I remember when I worked in the prison when I was still teaching, and I taught at West, Westville Correctional Center in uh, um, Westville, Indiana, and they had those guys, they never could sit still. It was always, you know, pushing them here and there, doing this and that. They're always moving. Very little time where they just sit still. And when they would sit still, it would be late at night, and they watch TV. Oh, it's just like everybody else, man, you know. <laughs> but, you know, bustling around all day, and then when you finally have free time, you're zombified in front of the TV. It takes control of your, your moments of peace. So it, it's this, the parallels are just extraordinary between prisons and daily life and so forth. So, you know, but, man, you bring up a great point. What are these camps doing there? You know, that's the, the real big mystery. I mean, they've been sitting there, some of them, for, in America for 15 years. Some of them actually for 30 and 40, but, you know, George Bush and um, a late in the Clinton administration, there were movements to make them, and then, uh, especially right when Bush got into presidency, they really, uh, you know, kicked off and got moving. See, and now they've been sitting there for 10 years, and, people, you know, conspiracy theorists have been saying all along, well, they're there, so they must be ready to round us up. And you wonder, okay, are they just patient and ready to round us up, you know, whenever they decide? Or is it the case that, you know, this is an Operation Northwoods where, like you were suggesting, maybe it's just all a trick because they've done, they, they have big plans that they initiate, or sorry, that they never initiate. What do you think? Hello? Uh, sorry, okay, you cut out for a second. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh, no, yeah, I, I agree totally. Uh, and then as far as people are so uh, dependent, you put out a theory, I remember at one of your early shows, saying that the camps may simply just be for the, the poor, you know, just big, massive poor mm -hmm. houses. And people are so dependent. Um, like, remember that, that clip we discussed with the uh, the – the government housing applications, how there's that huge ride, like like there's like thousands and thousands of people just, you know, begging, please, government, give me housing. And it wasn't even to get housing, it was to get their name in the <laughs> mm -hmm. system. So, I mean, if these, if there was a, like a really huge economic collapse, I think people would be lining up to get it. That's, it's kind of sad, but I mean, really, I think people would be rushing to go there. That's how far we've gone. That's how yeah. we've mm -hmm. become. That's how, that's how big of slaves we are. I bet you people would literally... They they they'd have to bring in riot cops just to slow people down from storming the the, the camps. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. It's almost like when you see. I mean, I laugh not at these people. Just laugh. What a amazing. I'm just kind of a laughy person. That's why I do that. But yeah, that's amazing. You see people lining up for this housing stuff in Detroit and riots almost started. It's almost. I mean, that's concentration camp style housing right there. I mean, it's it's almost worth worse in some in some ways and we're going to get cut off here in six seconds so ed i'll call you and let's continue this and we'll put this whole show up then i'm block talking a bit okay detroit you know lit, you know people i mean ed think about this people are so i mean these these poor and wonderful people in detroit so desperate for a home that they're ready to to beat each other to hamburger okay you know, and think about it. I was just in Ann Arbor because that's where I'm moving. And I'm setting up a place to live. And there's forest everywhere. If we had the skills, you know, we knew how to build a home for free out of the forest and eat the food of the forest, the healthiest food on the planet. How to live? If we knew spiritual practice, so we knew had, we had something to do in the forest. All those people could just go. They, who, they don't need the Detroit housing. They don't need to be dependent. They could just go to the forest. And be completely free and completely at peace. You know, that's what i got to do with my life. I mean, I'm in the process of slowly getting there. But, you know, I've got a family and so forth that takes a while to break out, you know, the system. What do you think about that idea? Yeah, well, it's all it ties into addiction and dependency culture. It's addiction on, you know, I've just noticed since an early age, I remember being a teenager and always hated having to get rides, you know, because you're always depending on someone else. 
when it comes down to this world, you can only fully depend on yourself.